Links to join the channel here over at Subscribestar, now over at Odyssey. So I saw this, and this is just so dumb. It's just an example of these people who are so deep in their echo chamber where they give these interviews, and they're saying things, and I know the, the interviewer is not as deep in the same echo chamber because they're, they're on both sides of the political aisle because they have to cover stories from everywhere. So they know when the person is giving this interview, they know the things they're saying are so incredibly stupid, but they just have to keep a straight face, and you know what are they going to do? And the problem is with um, interviewing people, is no hard questions ever get asked if there's a chance of a follow-up interview with them or their company. That's why pop culture uh, interviews are all fluff interviews. So actress Matilda Lutz claims Red Sonja movies will avoid the male gaze. That That's the thing that got me to make this. Is I just, I hear these, I read her little interview, I'm like, oh, God. Oh, it just, it drives me up the wall to hear how, and it, don't get me wrong, I have no interest in the, touch grass, my guy, touch grass, we, we're, we, we have no interest in these movies. Hollywood is over, Hollywood is over, I, I'm not sure Hollywood knows it's over yet, but, and the thing is, a lot of people on the left or the right of the political aisle, they don't, I don't think they understand how, how deep in a corner Hollywood has painted themselves. So, um, uh, Red Sonja wants to avoid the male gaze, done, <laughs> no problem there. So what they do is the uh, upcoming Red Sonja film. They make a, a movie for these fat, angry, feminist, single cat ladies. Except this is not the kind of movie that they're interested in here. They say it's a departure from, oh, you mean like a good movie? Conan's character, traditional portrayal, opting to shed the male gaze orientation of of people going to pay, pay money for tickets of previous iterations in favor of a narrative of feminism. Oh, are you kidding me? The shift raises concerns about the authenticity of the adaptation and its departure from the historical essence of Red Sonja as yet another franchise movie moves in a woke direction at the expense of fans. Translation, it's going to F it in the A, give it monkeypox and AIDS. So what happens with these movies is they fall flat and uh, then they blame men or conclude that, well, nobody is interested in the character or the genre. That's the one that, that's the one that is really hard to listen to when they conclude that, oh, the whole genre might be bad. And you go, no, 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 no. The, the, like the Charlie's Angels idea or whatever one of these, you know, where they make a woke movie. You go, it's a, the genre is fine. Just get rid of the woke directors. Can you do that? Let's, they go, oh, Disney, Star Wars. Go, oh, people must be done with with Star Wars. It's just magic must be over. And you look at Disney, it's like, it's over because you killed it. You and, uh, who is it? Uh, uh, Abrams and, uh, and, and Rian Johnson. Yeah. Can, can, can you get people who are not SJWs? Just get normal directors? Uh, no. No, that's not why we bought the rights to these movies. Nobody wants feminism or woke diversity if you got rid of the globalist parasites in Hollywood, you could make fun stories that feel organic to people. Oh, people must be done with Indiana Jones. Because it, uh, number five, where they, they fought the time-traveling Hugo Boss for the third time. Yeah, so five movies and three out of five movies, it's, it's you guys versus the Nazis. Three out of five movies. Yeah, what, what what's wrong with that? It's, um, you can do that once. The first movie was, you, you did that. Fine movie, great movie. I mean, it, a little bit silly, of course, the portrayal of the, the Germans as the bad guys. Don't get me wrong. That, that was, that's, you know, absolutely nonsense where he takes out a hanger and all this kind of, it's just cartoonishly stupid. But the movie itself, the film, um, the, the setup of the shots was done really well. And then the second one, they they go to India or something, um, which offended people at the, at the time. It's like, you know, more and more, if, if you just told people, you know, hey, not all movies are for all people, fair enough. But then uh, I think the third movie, they go and, oh, hey, you go boss again. And the fourth movie, they do the communists, which probably hurt the, uh, the literal um, Bolsheviks in Hollywood to make that. And then the fifth movie, they have time-traveling Hugo Boss. Well, since it bombed, I guess Indiana Jones is done, and people just aren't. No, it's just that it's just that woke Hollywood, literal communists in Hollywood, globalist parasites can't make uh, Indiana Jones character. I the actor's too old, but you could just replace the actor, you know, um, because telling stories about non-blonde people as the bad guys is just not something Hollywood can do. And they have uh, Spielberg and and uh, and Gold or Mangold making these uh, 
mangled mangling these movies um yeah it's not the the genre that's bad it's it's your insane insane anti-blonde hatred anyway um arnold's conan movies uh, i just saw one the other night uh pretty decent one and two i liked them both i actually liked i know two was sillier than one but for some reason i liked uh, i liked that a lot no those were not organic either they were dumb but they didn't take themselves seriously so they um they work so what she says is so what I can tell about Red Sonia is that the first ones in the comics were made with a very male-gazed orientation. This is different. It's very woman-empowered, which I loved about the script, which is causing fans across the internet to uh, to groan. You might as you might as well just take hundred dollar bills and burn them, and you would save money on the money that you're going to lose. And it, okay, this is probably like a fifty million dollar movie. I assume it's got to be low budget. I mean. They're not. They're not this cra- crazy. So uh, scantily clad bikini armor. Yeah, that's what people are on board with. And somewhere in here, she says something about that. Like, well, the bikini armor is still there, but there's a twist on it. So, uh, what I interpret that to mean is that she's gonna wear like a bodysuit under it, you know, and then the bikini armor will be over her clothing, so she'll be fully clothed. So nobody is is interested in this. So the um. They did as I mean, she just like the lack of self awareness. It just blows my tits off. So this is a similar interview to the remake of Charlie's Angels with uh, Elizabeth Banks, The Marvels, which just came out last year, Madam Web, Black Widow, Ghostbusters, Terminator, Vagina Power for women that don't watch those types of movies. So they fail. And since it's Larry Fink who's pulling his globalist strings, like the fat bloated spider at the center of the uh, the web like uh, what was that book Stephen King's it when he's trying to describe the monster um like uh they just keep doing it they just they just keep throwing money at these movies and here here's the thing I saw Beastmaster the other night and uh because you can watch movies on Crack Galactica's channel on a uh, Odyssey live streams and whatnot and yes Beastmaster had a black guy in it but he wasn't a Mary Sue character and he was a strong actor um, that could kind of play any role. If you're, if you're a good enough actor, you really can't pull it off. Um, it's just that actors nowadays are, are pretty much universally bad. And it was a ridiculous fantasy movie about a guy who talked to animals and could see through their eyes and, and whatnot. So it was, it was kind of okay. But the problem was, if they did it today, he would be a trans, lesbian, furry, other kin, bitching and moaning about microaggressions. And you can only have one pox per movie. Or it just feels kind of stupid. Not another teen movie had a scene with uh, one black guy at the party and another one shows up. <laughs> and they both agree that one has to leave. Because um, the movie really only works if, if there's one in the movie. Otherwise, it's kind of too annoying. And I uh, I saw uh, two nights ago or something, Last Starfighter. Which, uh, it had two pox in it. But one of them was, was in makeup. So that kind of worked. Anyway, the thing is, uh, you got to get on social media and keep expressing yourself. The the uh, the Sweet Baby Incorporated thing is in the news now, and they're trying to make a <laughs> Homeland Security is involved. Like games, video games are just going to glow from orbit. Like I really, I think there's something very dark that's going to happen with with video games and intelligence gathering and um, uh, like implanting, suggesting messages in, in people via via games and whatnot. I mean, the thing is. In a few years, when AI gets better, it's not to that point yet. Um, I wouldn't trust those kind of things on computers where you think you're talking to a bunch of other people. It's like it's AI federal agents to try to get you to say something crazy or, or something. Um, anyway, the thing is, the point is, get on a get on social media and say how stupid diversity and feminism is. Just be real upfront about it. Like, oh yeah, I'm just not into diversity. I just ah. I want to see my tribe represented and like, yeah, well, okay, you're, you're, you know, you're, you're on the art, but there's all these different groups of people. Yeah, I'm just not into that. I just want to see, I just want to see, you know, something out of like Aryan central casting, <laughs> some uh, World War II movie, but with the, uh, you know, blonde hair, blue eyed people as the good guys. I mean, you can go kind of overboard with it, um, Gilda Lily, because from their perspective, they're saying the same thing where they're th- diversity and representation. And there's some Disney employee, some Marvel employee, some black lady who's doing an interview talking about how she violates uh, federal law by not hiring white people. <laughs> she said this in an interview. It's like, you know, that's an admission of a, a, a USC uh, violation, right? You violated federal employment law. 
uh, equal protection, laws based off of equal protection and whatnot. And she just gave this interview and it's like, ah, wow, way to cost your uh, company money. It's like, do you think she'll get fired? Probably not because she had permission from her employer to say something so stupid. Anyway, um, so a feminist perspective in the film's narrative has sparked debate among fans about how developmentally disabled this entire movie will be. Her appeal was in her uh, sexuality and her prowess as a warrior, traits that have resonated with audiences for decades. Yeah, um, sex appeal sells, especially with silly sword and sorcery um, types of movies. There's nothing wrong with that kind of stuff. But um, going for a, going for a politically charged narrative, a feminist narrative that avoids the male gaze, that's um, that's absolutely insane. And they say the thing is they say this without. Well, that's nice. Sorry, they say this without any self awareness. You go so, uh, I mean, figuratively avoid the male gaze because when you you know when you say it, it's interpreted literally by avoiding the male customers. Like that's what you literally just said. I mean, okay, how do you how do you solve that equation? You're saying you're avoiding the male gaze so you don't want them to watch your movie. And then they go, oh, no, what do you mean? It's movies for everyone. But you, you just said you don't want the male gaze. Oh, well, we don't want the male gaze in like a sexual way, but we want them to, um, to uh, still watch the movie. Um, but you're insulting them. And people people don't even have to know anything about the movies now. If there's a chick in it, it's going to be diverse and and feminists and it's going to be woke and lame. There's uh, and the thing is nowadays you can see with a if there's non-white characters in it, it's like well you know they're going to be Mary Sue's and it's it's just like that's just a done deal. And if you have like a bunch of chicks in a movie, it's going to be like Madam Web, which apparently nobody saw. And you know I got to admit <laughs> I have not seen Madam Web yet. I have not seen a lot of uh, superhero movies. I, I, I'm pretty well behind, and I look at that and I go, "Yeah, I don't want to catch up on superhero movies." Those are, it, it was a, uh, it, it, you know, it had its time in the sun. Um, it came and went. Uh, anyway, uh, I um, touch grass, my guy. No, I hope they keep making these movies, keep spending money, keep keep uh, spending, you know. Your venture capitalist money in these type of movies because eventually some of these studios are going to have to go bye bye because when if they're faced with the idea of well we're going to have to change our narrative or we, we go to business and re- restructure the business and be like oh we're just going to go out of business we're not going to we're not going to like make movies you know fun movies silly movies like out of the 80s because that's like a war crime in their minds that's that's how that's how drinking the Kool Aid a lot of these people are anyway. F all these people in the A, and you don't have to support them any way, shape, or form because you can always go uh, go set the main sail and uh, do it that way. Anyway, like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys all next episode.